I would like to center my sharing on what we are doing as particularly for us Filipinos so give so much respect to the dead eh, on this month of November. So we just came from cemeteries, columbaries last week, and I'm sure that during these days, people are doing so. Eh. Let me start with a little story. <clears throat> My first assignment as a young priest was here in Christ the King when there was still a high school department, the usual high school. And I was assistant prefect of discipline and it was, there were many seminarians then, it was um, not that common that we become close to some family, especially those who are just not that far living here for, in, in Christ the King. So we were close to this one family that I remember very well because of this. Okay? One day, a son seminarian came to us and told us for meters that his father was diagnosed with cancer and he was given some months to live. This kind of shocked us, knowing the father who was a very nice man, good man, holy man. And so we told the son, first time, the first occasion or chance that your father and mother would visit you, tell them that we would like to talk to them. After a few weeks, I think it was um, visitation time, Sunday, so they came. <clears throat> right away, I noticed the physical change in the father. He was rather on the, you know, wide side, medyo mataba. But he has grown thinner so considerably. His hair, hair was falling out because of chemo. But there was one thing that I noticed that has not changed in him. And this, I told him when we were kind of alone, <clears throat> I said, Sir, you know that you're dying. I was rather portrait or straight with him. Said. But I noticed there's one thing that has not changed in you. What is that, Father? You have remained a jolly person. He has always been talkative, you know, kind of funny. And he gave me a very simple answer, but straight to my heart. So that 40 years after, I can still remember that. Napaka-simple naman ang sagot. Because this was 1982, imagine. He told me, I am ready, Father. This means he is ready for death. <clears throat> True enough, after some months, he died. <clears throat> we were there at his funeral in Bulacan. I knew that I had short prayer to the Lord, personally telling him, receive your son, who is very ready to be with you, Lord. Readiness for death. That's why I was wanted to focus on that during this month of February, uh, November. What does it mean really to be ready for death? You know, we can read so many things about this. We priests could tell you about so many things, spiritual leaders and preachers. But I know but you know I always would like to go back to the words that come from the Lord Himself. What is being ready for that, for you and for me? Let's hear it from the Lord. One time, I think it was a scholar of the law who asked him, which is the greatest commandment? You know what he answered, our Lord answered. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might. And you know that's not really new because that is from the Shema. Every devout holy Jew knows that, that even the parishes, they have that written on the phylacteries on their foreheads, on their wrists. Nakahatali yan. 
in Exodus. That's from the Exodus. Love the Lord your God. And if one does that honestly, then he or she is ready. Will always be ready. In the gospel, it could mean like what the apostles were saying, increase our faith. When there is faith, there is love. When there is love, there is faith. I don't think you could, you could separate these two. A person who really loves will always ask for an increase of faith. A person who loves God will always have time for God. And so to you, particularly watching or being with us on Streamline, remember that what we give as time for the Lord is an indication of that love that we have for Him. Kaya pag wala tayong oras sa panahon sa Panginoon, our love for Him will be very question, questionable. And the Lord continues the second commandment or it's even one and the same two coin, uh, one coin lang yan with two sides eh? love your neighbor as yourself a person who loves a neighbor <clears throat> anyone will always be considered ready and it's never easy not everyone is lovable we can be so choosy. There are people who hurt us. And that's why our Lord in today's gospel would say, Forgive seven times. In another version, I think it's in Matthew. This is Luke. Seventy times, seven times. Ibig sabihin, walang katapusan ng pagpapatawad. Never be a cause of scandal or sin for others. That's loving the neighbor. When, our Lord, when somebody asks him, Who is my neighbor? Our Lord gave him the parable of the Good Samaritan. An enemy. Yes, a neighbor is even, even an enemy. So for me, this is the secret formula that the Lord gives us. Straight from the mouth of the Lord himself. How is it to be ready in your life when God calls you? When God calls us? That we strive and struggle to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. And that we love the neighbor as ourselves. Let me repeat that, never easy. We all have experienced this in our lives. Finding time for prayer, doing good, battling against sin and temptation. Kahiya naman natin yan with God's help. Loving even the most unlovable and most unlikable in our lives. This is the call of the Lord. That's why as we remember those who have died, who, has gone, who have gone ahead of us, we ask the Lord, first and foremost, forgiveness for their failures in their lives. Just like you and me, they failed too. But just like you and me, they need the reward that God has promised us. Tayo mga buhay, maybe this is our advantage, we can still be ready. And that's why, that's one formula that I am giving you. The formula that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Love God, love the neighbor. The commandment, which is a coin, one, kind, one coin only, with two sides. We ask the Lord that He may help us in our strivings to be loving of Him and to be loving of others. Amen. We all rise.